All right, guys, it's Thursday. Today's home workout is a 21-15-9 uh, dumbbell, hang squat cleans, and handstand push-ups. So this workout is a fast, short workout where we're looking to finish sub 10, so under 10 minutes. Uh, the dumbbell hang squat cleans, guys, uh, we're doing from the hang position, so we're not going all the way down to the floor. And preferably, if you have two objects, um, use them for the dumbbell hang squat cleans. If not, you guys can go alternating for the 21, 15, and the nines. Um, and then handstand push-ups here, I want you to pick that progression that allow you to uh, move fast. So um, if you find that handstand push-ups, your, your capacity is not quite there, so you're doing 45 reps in this workout. And if you haven't really done 45 reps of handstand push-ups, maybe progress it down a little bit, go down to some kind of incline push-up um, or a deficit style push-up to make it um, still working on that pushing strength, so working on the push uh, through our arms, but uh, you're able to keep a high intensity for this workout. So it's a kind of like a uh, pull and push workout here. It's gonna be feeling similar to that crossover workout called Fran, if you've ever done that one before. Um, I would choose those progressions that allow you to move fast through this one, as I mentioned before. So with the dumbbell hang squat cleans as well, that weight should allow you to do at least um, seven in a row in that first round. So uh, you're doing 21 in that first round, so three sets to finish that 21. Or if you can do more, that's great. Um, ideally, this workout, again, as I mentioned, try to finish it underneath 10 minutes. So keep that intensity nice and high. And again, with these styles of workouts, you wanna try to progressively get faster once you get to the nines at the end there. Once you finish that workout, guys, we have some more work on some uh, the lower body there. We'll be doing two sets of 10 and 10 reverse lunges and single-legged deadlifts all on one side. So the reverse lunge plus the single-legged deadlift is one complex. I'll count that as one rep. And we'll do 10 on one side and 10 on the opposite side. Then we're going to go into 10 and 10 side plank reaches, really trying to work on those obliques, adding a little bit of twist into our movements. Um, and this is more of kind of supplementary work, keeping your body uh, in good shape, keeping that maintenance um, in your body to continue those workouts nice and healthy. So make sure you get after that one, um, after the workout there, um, and let us know how that goes. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoy the workout and the afterburner today. We'll see you next for the warm-up video. Okay, guys, today's warm-up is three rounds. We're starting off with five inchworm walkouts. So for that inchworm, just remember, try to keep the back of the legs nice and straight so you can feel that stretch in the hamstrings. Um, you can round your back, that's going be fine. We're going to walk out that inchworm. If you can keep going further and further, head through that window, rib cage in, squeeze your butt, poke it for a second at the bottom, and then walk it back out. So at the top, you're feeling that stretch in the hamstrings. You're warming up the shoulders by walking out, and we're even getting into that core tensioning as you walk the hands a little bit further from the body. Once you're done that, we're gonna go for 10 seated leg lifts. For the seated leg lift, we're just gonna sit down on the floor. You can bring your hands to start a little bit further backwards. Get that back and chest up tall, pull that rib cage down so you feel those abs, and you're just gonna raise both legs as high as you can for 10 reps. This exercise is going to target your core and your hip flexors. So that little muscle at the top of your hip, uh, top of your quad there, you're gonna feel that firing up as you go. If you wanna make it a little bit harder, you can bring your hands further forward. That makes it a lot harder to try to get those legs up as high. Play around with it. You can start with the hands a little bit further back. To make it even easier if you need to, you can bring your hands all the way back and build on those lifts. Once you're done that, we're going to go for 10 shoot-throughs. So in a shoot-through, um, for now, I'm going to show you guys using uh, parallettes here, which is what we use at the gym for these. If you're at home and you don't have parallettes, a lot of you might not, you can use two chairs. So just hands on top of the chairs, two boxes, anything that you have lifted off the ground will do. Um, so for that shoot-through, we're starting off at the top of the push-up. So you see that rib cage is in, back's nice and flat. You're going to tuck the knees in, bring your legs through, and then I'm going to tuck the knees back in and push back to that start position. So we're going for 10 of those, no push up or dip at the beginning or end. After you've done that, we're going for a 20 second bottom of squat hold. So for some of you guys, it might be great for you to even use a post for this one or a door jam. 
for some of you guys, you don't need that. Um, and either way, guys, like we always say experiment with both if you can. So what we're trying to do here using that post, you can just get your back and chest up really tall, sink those hips down low, try and get the back and chest up tall. You can rock gently back and forth. You can also try, again, doing this without holding your poster ball. You're just rocking a little bit, holding it for 20 seconds, trying to feel that core tension, and also trying to feel that hip opening up as you go. Enjoy today's warm up. <laughs> I forgot. Last thing is, is that clean. So it is a squat clean. If you have a barbell, if you have a kettlebell, dumbbell, we're doing squat cleans. If you're not comfortable pulling from the ground and you're new to the squat clean, you're just learning it, let's work just from that hand position. So remember, just bringing it down to about the knees, making sure the hips are back and we're holding forward to get ourselves in that good hang position. Only go down to the floor if you are keeping that back nice and flat and you feel comfortable doing the full movement. So the kettlebell staying tight to the body, or the barbell staying tight to the body, and all the movement mechanics are there. So, uh, for the strict handstand push-ups again, you can have that second progression just in case um, that first progression you just lose your strength or like halfway through you're not able to Rep. Always have that second backup in case just to keep the workout going. So, for that, guys, um, we're going to talk about that dive bomber. So, we're going to use that dive bomber as a progression, and then we're going to go into that strict handstand push up as the next progression above that. So, with that dive bomber, guys, um, if you go nice and wide with your feet, guys, you should use some kind of ab mat or some kind of mat to get your head down to the ground, at least when you make contact with it. Um, Hands are going to be in about push-up width, and they're going to be close to the feet. From here, we're going to think about leaning forward so that we're on those toes and getting over top of those wrists. And then from there, we're going to be dropping the head down right in front of our hands. So notice that my hands are behind my head and they're not in line. So I want them back here, and I'm going to press my head straight through the window to finish that rep. So that's key guys, really trying to get our head in front of our hands when we're doing that strict handstand push up. Whether it be with that dive bomber or even if you get your feet on a box and do it elevated, make sure that head is going in front of the hand so we can really use that back to drive it up and not use the front of the delts and put too much pressure on the shoulder there. So you guys can do those or you can do your strict handstand push ups against the wall. Same things apply. Get those elbows in, get that head in front of the hands, stay in a nice tight body position there. Alright, for today's afterburner, we have three sets of alternating reverse lunges um, with a single legged deadlift at the end. We're going to use two weights for that today. So I would hold them in that farmer's carry position or that suitcase carry position. First movement, we're going to do that reverse lunge. Coming down, chin nice and vertical, chest nice and tall. Then we're going to stand it up. Then from there, same leg that was in front, we're going to do that single legged deadlift. So coming down, then opening up at the top there. So we're going to be doing 10 reps or 10 of those complexes on the one side, and then switching and doing 10 more on the opposite side. Again, really take your time with this, guys. Really try to work on that activation in the hamstring and in that uh, quad as well. Notice that the, if your balance is going with those single-legged deadlifts, put your foot behind, start from there, then hinge at the hips to help you with that balance. Also, another thing, guys, really try to pinch the ground, grip the floor with your toes, then it'll allow you to really stay stable in that movement. Once you're done that, guys, we're gonna go into those plank reach outs. So we're going into that plank position on the floor. You can go off your elbows or you can go off the base of your hand. We're gonna keep ourselves nice and parallel, so nice and straight. Then with that arm, we're gonna reach out as far as we can. Then we're gonna pull back. Reach out as far as we can, then pull back into it. We're gonna go for 10 on one side, then you're gonna switch and do 10 on the opposite side. Hope you guys enjoyed today's afterburner. We'll see you tomorrow for the next workout.